Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, I'm excited to welcome back to the show legendary rock manager Doc McGee. He's going to share with us some of the thoughts and comments about KISS's upcoming last 50 dates of their End of the Road tour. Is it possible for them to play other shows in the future? And so much more. There's lots to cover in this episode. I know you guys are going to really enjoy this. So let's jump in and let's get started. Doc, I just want to say thank you for joining the show today. I had you on about a year and a half ago, and I appreciate you coming back. Not a problem. Excellent. So, you know, about... Made it a year and a half, so there you go. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, the big news about two weeks ago, KISS announced their final 50 shows, right? And you've been working with the band for, I think, it's about 27 years now. The tour, the end of the road tour was originally announced back in 2018. For you, does it feel real? Does it feel like, wow, this is really going to be the end now? You know something? Um, It truly is the end of what we know of KISS, okay? So the the Gene and Paul getting out there in makeup doing another tour is non-existent. Um, Will there be other forms of KISS maybe in the future after I'm gone and after they're gone? I, I don't see that KISS goes away. I think there's, you know, if, if, there were people, there'd be movies, there'd be, you know, to me, Kiss is uh, Marvel. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, so I don't see, I don't see it going away, but as coming to see Gene and Paul and Kiss perform and Doc McGee being backstage to do this, December 2nd will be the last time you'll see that. And I'll be there, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm, you, you guys made the announcement on the Howard Stern show, like I said, about two weeks ago. And there's sure. a lot of history with Howard. On one hand, in the past, you know, he has said he's not the biggest Kiss fan in the world. On the other hand, he's Howard Stern, legendary. What made you guys decide to announce it on his show? Well, you know, something you, you want somebody that's just not a fan. You want somebody that has reach, you know, and, and you want it to be real and you want it to be validated to say that somebody that will come and push the envelope to make sure that people understand that this is the land they end the kiss as we know it. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. This isn't something where we go, Oh, we're going to, Oh no, this is the last time you're going to see Gene and Paul. So now Gene and Paul are in the band. Somebody else is coming out in uh, Gene's makeup and stuff hmm. that will that happen in some, I don't know. We don't have any, we don't have any say over that because we won't be part of that. Um, we still at the moment own KISS, uh, so uh, we don't see any plans. I mean, again, like you said, at the end of the day, we physically can't go do this very much longer and and give the people a show that we give them. Um, and that's really the reasoning for all this. The reasoning for all this is that, hey, we have to go out on top, you know what I mean? On as top as we could have got. Right. And f- after 50 years to be able to play these sold out shows in 59 countries around the world is incredible. Yep. And, and, a, and a testament to the brand itself. So, you know, I think by, by moving forward after December 2nd in the sense of, of going and doing tours, uh, is counterproductive for the brand. Right. Now, do you think, because I picked up on something you said there before, that for now, you guys still own the, the name, the brand, 
we see so many artists now selling their music. Do you think there'll ever be a day that the guys would consider selling the likeness to their makeup to another company? You know something? Th this is 2023 and everything's for sale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, everything is, whenever you think that it's not, it is. Hmm. And so, yeah, you don't know. Uh, these guys have never wanted to sell any of this stuff. So, um, yeah, but you don't know where they're going to be in, you know, six months or a year from now or two years from now. You, you don't know. Sure. Uh, at the moment, um, we've had talks with a lot of people uh, about you know, joint ventures and partnerships and stuff like that and the branding side of KISS. Uh, but nothing, nothing that's uh, written in stone or strategically developed, you know. Well, I guess that's something for fans to keep an eye on in the years to come. Because of course, there's always something <laughs> to do with Kiss. Well, that's for sure. So going back to the tour that's taking place this year and the 50 dates, right? So last week it was announced that Skid Row is going to be doing some of the European shows. Yeah. Obviously, the band has a history with Kiss, playing the cruises playing the, the original farewell tour. Clearly you have history with the band as well. What does it mean to you guys to bring Skid Row out? Well, you know, something there, uh, they rejuvenated themselves. They got uh, another singer that that uh, sparked almost like what we did when Sebastian came in. Uh, and sometimes, you know, like when you look at uh, at Motley, and I love Mick Mars. I, I tr truly think he's a great, underrated guitar player yep. you know uh not underrated i think he's undervalued as a guitar player okay yeah okay. but i think john five stepped it up a notch in a different in a different kind of way that somehow sparked a little bit more movement and a little bit more stuff in the whole thing so you know yeah i mean it's it's uh so i think on the skid row front i think we see that happen Yep. And, you know, and I, I've, uh, I've always liked Rachel, uh, never cared for snake. I've known. Him <laughs> we won't uh, tell him that. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he knows I love him. Of course. So, uh, uh, and so, you know, we wish him the best and they're good and they got great songs. And when you can sing those songs that they have, you know what I mean? And, and, and do it the right way. Um, it means a lot because people come for that stuff. They want to, they want to hear that song done that way. That's how they remember the song. That's what they want to hear. Yep. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear a spoken word part of "18 to Life." They want. They want you to <laughs> sing this song. So yeah, no, like you said, I think Eric's kind of given them like a new excitement around them that I haven't seen in years. Yes, exactly. Yep, yep. Now, of course, that just begs the question now for the U.S. fans, will there be a band opening up the shows uh, in North America? Yeah, and we're going to make that announcement in the next week or so. Excellent. We're going to have something. Have, we'll, have, we'll have some for sure. Right. Excellent. Oh, we'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that. Now, talking about the North America shows, there's obviously some shows in Canada. No surprise, the last two shows, Madison Square Garden, and those sold out instantly, right? Um, any ideas of adding additional, like I look at the schedule and I know you guys are in Baltimore on Wednesday, Thursday is off and then Friday, Saturday at the garden, any ideas of adding another Madison square garden show on Thursday or somewhere no. else? No, no, that's it. No, that's, that's in, in that part of it. Uh, that's, that's going to be the, the end of it. There's no, there's no shows available. Okay. No, there's no shows available. And you know something, I kind of like the end being two shows at the garden and not stretching it out and beating it up <laughs> you know, and, and trying to add more of this. We talked about it and there was a couple of shows available like a week and a half earlier that okay. I could have gotten. And I just said, let's, let's just do it the right way. And because whoever gets those two shows the, the week before could have probably gone to any of the other shows. Sure. And, and not had to go to and torture themselves at the garden. <laughs> so true. You know, play the garden. So, um, you know, those two shows will be the final shows of Kiss. Now, one of the things I noticed is that, you know, as has been for years, there's always meet and greets before the shows. 
The sound check has been available for the last couple of years as well. But there's two shows at the God and there's no meet and greet a sound check. Any yeah. reason for that? Yeah, I think that, you know, at, at the end of a 50 year career, um, I think that I think that the people who get it won't get the full effect of what they paid for because the guys will be so distracted and and emotional and family and people and everybody you know it'll be such a crazy time that um i just thought i would kind of stop the madness uh, <laughs> and, and and you know we do stuff to help people get better seats get get in quicker have the have the lounge all that kind of stuff but uh but the sound checks and all that kind of stuff that we're doing on all of them yep. because the guys like doing it. That's really the, the, the key to it. They, they sound check anyways, and they like it better when they go out. Like they, I go, you only have to do 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> That's what they do. They do 20 minutes. They're out there for an hour. Yep. hour. I have to go sometimes and go, okay, come on. We got to get <laughs> so, you could get, so you could be on stage at uh, nine, nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they enjoy it. They've always enjoyed the fans tremendously. Um, uh, more every day, I think. I get, I get so much from Gina, Paul, and Tommy, and Eric on on fans and this and how do we help this one and how do we help? You know, I mean, it's it's consistently, you know. Uh, a big driver for these guys yep. so you know we don't we don't want to slight anybody and we don't want people to go away with a bad taste and say oh jesus i paid all this money and then <laughs> and they didn't even show up or the guy didn't show you know we're not that guy we're not that band right right well you know and you mentioned before also there'll probably be a lot of family i would anticipate these two shows at the garden to be huge events, you know, um, like you said, with family, probably a lot of celebrities are going to be there as well. So you want to make sure to get the bands on their A game for those shows. Yeah. And the other thing too is, is that even the family and the, and the celebrities that come, yep. these guys have to do a show, their final shows of their career. They're not going to be standing there, you know, rubbing elbows with everybody <laughs> and talking and makeup and, and, and costumes and stuff. They're going to be sitting there pondering the last shows of their career. Mm -hmm. Sure, you know I mean? it's uh, you know, it, it's it's going to be an emotional ride for them. And I'm, uh, I'm sure it'll be for everybody there. Yeah, it, it will, will be for me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. So you know, obviously, a lot of fans have been asking since the whole end of the road tour started. You know, will Ace, will Peter ever show up at any of the shows? And I know you've been vocal. Gene's been vocal. Like, hey, they're invited to come up for encores anytime. To me, there's a difference between an invite and a, hey, financial offer. Hey, I'll pay you X to come. Is there any talk to have them come for these shows? You know, something we we talk about it, you know, and uh, there's pros and cons of it. But really, do you have two cat men? Do you have two, <laughs> you know, space aces do you have do you have a fox come out mm -hmm. do you have a, i mean what what where do you does that does that mean anything at the end of the day or can we celebrate that video wise and keep the consistency of a great rock show so when people see it see it it's just not a tribute to everybody who wants to come out who is part of this this organization at some point mm -hmm. okay and so I think that, you know, there's a time and place for everything. This happens to be the lineup of KISS. Uh, very strong lineup. And I can't tell you how happy I've been um, going to, and I go on every show mm -hmm. uh, and I watch it. And it's, it's such a pleasure to listen to the sound and to really watch them play and watch them better themselves every night and have meetings every night about the show. Mm. So two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, mm. texting back and forth, Tommy sending videos to the, the guys. Hey, mm -hmm. try that. this is every night. Right. And that's, that's exciting to me instead of, you know, everybody going, oh, fuck this. I mean, you know, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not doing that, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so, so 
that camaraderie is just so uh, important to me. And I think to the fans, you know, there's a, like you said, there's a time and place for everything. You know, when the Jets go to the Super Bowl, uh, Joe Namath doesn't come out and play. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, very true. Yeah. That's very true. Chet well, fans might wish he could come out and play, get, but that's another thing. Get, I was going to say, I'll never get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, what about somebody like Bruce Kulick, where the makeup doesn't come into play, and obviously he's still he's on the cruises every year. Is there any chance that he could join Bruce any shows? You know, something I don't know. We're not a jam band, right? If you look historically, we don't have anybody come up and play with us. Mm -hmm. You know, we play Kiss songs. And we're seven feet tall, and we're <laughs> monsters, and we're we're big, we're, we're the superheroes on stage, and people don't really like to get up with us because they look like midgets. <laughs> uh, and and so it's it's a different it's a different animal. Yep. You know what I mean? So so we're we're like we're like the Super Bowl. The team <laughs> plays football. They don't have guest star quarterbacks, guest star wide receivers, guest stars, this and that. We play KISS. We tribute people on stage for songs, videos, all that stuff. That's all great because that's part of our heritage. Yep. And again, there's no way that KISS could have been where they're at today without Ace and Peter and Gene and Paul at the beginning, for sure. And, and, and there's no way that we could be where we're at today with all four. <laughs> so it just, you know, that's just the way it goes. It's just yep. attrition. Yep. Yep. Now, do you think that those MSG shows will be filmed either for a DVD or pay per view special or anything like that? I'm sure that we'll come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be know, shocked if you didn't sell me something, Doc. I'd <laughs> be shocked if I didn't come up with something. <laughs> exactly. no, we, want, we want to do something very special. We're working on it right now. We're, we're, uh, you know, but we want it to be. One thing Kiss has always done is whether you like Kiss or not, whether you like the music of Kiss or not, you go to that show and it's a fucking show. <laughs> and so people go, when they walk away, nobody says, oh, what a bullshit show. Right. You know, they talked about politics. They talked about that. They don't talk, they don't do anything but get out there and kick ass. Yep. Okay. Great. One ballad is Beth. Right. Okay. And 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 they don't even like doing that, but they they, they do it. Uh, so <laughs> it's um, so it's you know because they like fast and furious, and they they know tempo, and they got together and did this because they wanted a band that they wanted to go see. Yep. So so that's how the band was developed. Of course, yep. So therefore, if they don't want to see it, they don't want to put it in their show. I can totally respect that. Now, I was yeah. mentioning the DVD and the pay-per-view, and you know, I have to give you and Paul credit. You both spoke up about the whole, I'll say, Dubai situation with those DVDs, and you guys have said you're working on it. And I just want to add one thing here. Anybody who pays attention and knows, knows that it's not Kiss that held this up. It's another company, I won't name them, that you guys were working with that didn't deliver. But can you give the fans an update on that? Do you have anything to say about that? You know, we're in litigation over it and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But, you know... It's a really good show. Um, I'm very proud of the show. I'm, I'm proud of the production value of the show. Um, we did something that nobody could do in the height of, of, uh, of a pandemic. Uh, everybody was doing shows out of their garage and uh, on their lawn and in their living room. And when people would ask us to do something, I go, we don't do shit like that. Right. We, we blow stuff up and we, and we said, let's go to Dubai and let's do fucking New Year's the way it should be. And they have the biggest stage and the biggest pyro and let people see that this is the entertainment business and you have to be entertained. Yep. And that's what we did. Unfortunately, in this world of legal and everybody is a victim and all that kind of shit <laughs> go on forever, uh, there's all kinds of problems that 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 come into to play. Um, I, we don't like what happened because we wanted it to be out and it didn't get out. And there's some people that haven't gotten what they wanted and what they deserved. Okay, and we'll we're going to make that happen for them. We're going to do so, we got to do something for everybody that bought shit. 
Okay. We're not going to let them down no matter what. Okay. We're, we just got to figure out how it comes on them and who has it. And we've taken care of a bunch of people already. Hmm. Okay. And because they're our fans, those are the people who paid hard earned money to go see it or to buy it or to do this. And I've traded stuff off, given them box sets, they're doing different, different things that they, they couldn't have got. And, you know, if, you, if you're out there and you have a Dubai thing that you have and you have the receipts and everything, you contact us, we'll take care of it. And, Doc, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad you did. I actually know somebody who did contact you guys, and you did make it right with a box set to kind of make him whole. So um, you're That's not just true. BSing. I didn't want to say that because I wasn't sure if that was public <laughs> information, but you're, you're absolutely right. I know for a fact you've done that. Yes, I know we have, and we don't we, we don't. We don't make shit up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we don't do. Yeah. Okay. We may hype a lot of shit. But <laughs> Kiss hype make... stuff, really? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh man. So you know, speaking of hype and stuff, you know, I've realized that KISS has been very particular about how they've said this, that these shows coming up this year is the last shows of the last tour. So it just begs the question, somebody who's been on the cruise for the last 10 years, is there going to be another cruise in 2024? Because the band was talking about it. <laughs> yeah. If we could do a, some sort of a cruise that didn't have the elements of KISS performing and stuff like we don't want to do anything to all these people that came to see KISS for the last time. Hmm. Okay? So we love the cruise because they become they've been 10 years of these people yep. there were 450 cabins last year that showed up for both for for both yep this is amazing groups. yep and and we went down and and sp spent the evening with them and and talked with them these people come 33 countries come from all around the world to do this cruise i've been on it for t uh, 10 times <laughs> okay i've been on it 10 times i speak at it I yes. <laughs> I really enjoy the cruise. My wife does. Yep. To get my wife to go on a cruise, <laughs> you don't just have to stick a shotgun in her mouth and drag her up. <laughs> okay. uh. but, but she enjoys it because it's a it's a tribal thing that you can't explain. Yep. And and in my world of having arguably the biggest bands in the world for forty years. I've never seen hmm. I've never seen anything this authentic and this moving as the cruise to me. Yep. So do we uh, we would have had one this year. Okay, we could have had one this year. I could have done one in October. Yep. And we said we did the two cruises because we said that was in 10 years and that was what we we're gonna do. And then we said, well, can, how can we do another cruise? I said, I don't know. We'll talk about it. Well, they, it won't be these guys up there doing acoustic sets, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> uh, it won't be them performing as Kiss. Uh, I, I don't know. We have, we've talked about it to, to the point of not doing it. Oh, wow. Okay. So I know on the so, first cruise, Paul was talking about maybe having Soul Station, a Gene Solo show. So it sounds like, well, that's up in the air. Wanted, we all want it to continue. Right. And I think it should continue. I think KISS conventions continue. I think this is this an extension of a KISS convention. This is just this is just us getting together. And if and we we've asked Peter to come. We've asked Ace has been on it. Yep. Uh, we've we've asked everybody to come and we paid them. Yep. Like we we, <laughs> Looks like we didn't pay them. Yep. And we so we and so we've thrown money at Peter and we throw money at Ace and and we, because we like both of them. Right. I guess okay. Peter turned it down. Obviously, Ace, like you said, was there in 2018. I guess Peter turned it down. Yeah, Peter turned it down, but that's up to him. That's of course. It's, his, it's his prerogative to do what, what he thinks is right for him. Sure. Uh, but is he is he welcome at all of them? Yes. Would mm -hmm. I say, hey, if we were going to do another cruise, Peter, come up there and do, you know, do a, a class, talk to people. Hmm. Once a day for an hour, we'll put you up into the thing and you can just talk. You can do a drum off. You can do a, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff, you know, because you, you're vested in this. Sure. Okay. You're vested in this. 
You started KISS. You were the founding member of KISS. Yep. Okay. And so nobody fired Peter. Nobody fired Ace. Right. Okay. They quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so it wasn't us that, that, that threw them out. Right. You know, or me or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't any of that. Sure. They, they just had their own reasons for wanting to not be there. Yeah. So, and it wasn't even financial. So it, it's just, it, whatever it is they want to do is fine with me. I like them both. Yeah. You know, I talk to Ace by we text once a month, once, oh, uh, once every oh, couple of oh, weeks. Yeah. You know, he sends me jokes. He's a funny fucking guy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Absolutely. Ace is, Ace is a funny cat. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Now I know Gene's mentioned even recently, hey, I still want to do a Vegas residency. Could you ever see something like that in their future? No. No, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I you know, I again, yeah, everybody when it comes to the end, everybody wants to do more. Right. Okay. Um, I mean Brady wants to play again. <laughs> right, exactly. He's gonna unretire every year for the next 20 years, I think. Yeah, but he, but he's 40 years old. Right. Okay. <laughs> he, but we're 70 something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the focus has to be we got kids, grandchildren, people that we that we neglected for our own uh, building our careers and our and our and and being away from home and you know none of us are going to get out of this alive. Okay. True. So this is QTR. Yep. All the time <laughs> remaining. Yeah. I was just thinking of that as you were talking. Yeah. yeah. So for you then, what do you think when the tour winds down? What is is your plans just to kind of enjoy that beautiful scenery you have in the backyard and kind of well, right off into the I'm sunset? Gonna, I'm, I'm going to do that. And there's a, there's a lot of things with Kiss. There's so many different elements with the makeup and the different things that can go on. You know that doesn't that isn't Gene and Paul strapping the boots on and getting out there. And so there's. You know, we have a movie getting ready to to to, to be filmed. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff and plans in different in different in different areas. So you know, we have rock and brews. We have all kinds of stuff that we're doing. Yep. So you know, this is just one of the elements that won't be there. When you uh, say a movie, is that a documentary or another uh, like? It's a biopic. Oh, okay. It's a biopic about the first four years of Kiss, and it's oh, nice. uh, it's it's uh, uh, we're just starting it now. I mean, we've already we already sold it; it's already done. It's we have a director, me G, and we have you know, um, so that's moving along, and that'll come in twenty four. Okay, and um, and so there's just again, Kiss is like Kiss is like Spider Man. <laughs> You know, this is just this is like all of them, like Batman, like all of them. They're Marvel. Yep, yep. And, and like, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, so that you know. Uh, well, I was gonna say, you know, like you said, there's always something else that that could be sold, and even just on the music side, you guys have been putting out the box sets, Destroyer, Creatures of the Night box sets, which were well received by the fans. You offer yeah. soundboard releases. Will those continue as the band winds down in the future? Absolutely, because I think that we have to give people different fresh new stuff and that they don't have that they, and we don't we don't you know you can't find it uh for a dollar 98 in a walmart <laughs> bin okay. right. these are these are kind of limited editions all the stuff that for collectors and for people who who love kiss and uh and and want to have a piece of it and you know kiss is uh is a collectible kiss That's itself true. is a collectible that is true. So, so it's, uh, I mean, you got an ace, that's an ace guitar right behind you. Oh, it? I've got probably 10 or 12 guitars. Gene, Paul, Tommy, yeah, every, every band I member. Tommy, I see Tommy's and I yep. see Ace right yep. behind And literally right over here is four Gene guitars, another Paul from one of the Sail Away shows. So my, my room is littered with Kiss stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, you know, all of those, all those things are important to people. Yep. And important to us. So, you know, it's, um, it just is the nature of the beast. Sure. You know, I remember seeing the band Mohegan Sun, October 2016, right before uh -huh. the cruise. 
And I remember Paul announcing on the stage that night, hey, as soon as we get back from the cruise, we're going to go in the studio, record a new album. And then it never happens. <laughs> what what happens with that? Because <laughs> I, I mean, I remember texting oh, friends. I still know, have those texts. Like, they're recording right I, after the cruise. <laughs> everybody wants, when you're an artist, that's mm -hmm. what you do. You create. Yep. Okay. The sad part about it is when you have such a long liturgy as Kiss, the people don't really want to hear anything new. They really want to hear the songs that they know, that they that they feel comfortable. I, I met with somebody, I was playing golf with somebody, and he said, I'm one of Kiss's biggest fans. I go, like, you haven't heard that before. Go, <laughs> uh, no, you're, you're one of about uh, 50 million. And he goes, no, he, goes, no. he says, how about this? I love the elder. <laughs> I go, so you're the guy that bought that, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so everybody has that, you know, that's why when you look or you, when you even look and you see the stones or you see, listen, a lot of people would like to play different stuff that means something to them that, that wasn't successful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they throw a couple of those in the stinkers in <laughs> because they, they they feel better about doing it. But really the crowd goes, ah, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're not here for us. We're here for the people. The people want to hear these songs that they know. Yeah. And that so yeah, I'll tell you, I think that Monster was a great record. I agree. It's my favorite record since Rock and Roll Over. How about that? I, I, I think I think Monster was a fabulous Kiss record. Agreed. That sounded like Kiss, that had the all the elements of Kiss. Didn't wasn't trying to sound like fucking Pearl Jam or or, yep. or whatever that I've heard in the past. Mm -hmm. But this was just to do a Kiss record with new music, and still, you know, modern day Delilah, nothing. Uh, all the ones that we put out, crickets. Yep. <laughs> okay. and, and even though we go, it's sound because people don't know what they like. They like what they know. That is so true. So that is... that's so when you're out there, we're here to entertain them, not them entertain us. Yep. Yep. Now, I know a few weeks ago, you were uh, cornered in, in one of these events and you acknowledge that Kiss is, and like most of the bands these days are using tracks in concert. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? I know you kind of seem cornered on that other interview. We want to make it the best show possible for people to enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? If you want to strip down to where there's no reverb, where there's, where you're playing out of a Fender amp <laughs> with no trouble or no everything on zero so that you can have a quote, pure, exactly what the guitar sounds like no guitar sounds like a guitar hmm. okay <laughs> the guitar <laughs> sounds like a guitar you plug it into these things and they got a whole different life jimmy <laughs> page changed it with with distortion and everything else and jeff beck and everybody else so you use technology to enhance what you do to reproduce the stuff that we did on the record to make it sound exactly like the record because that's what you came to hear Right, right. You don't, you don't want to hear it four octaves lower and slower, and 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 you go, wow, what was that? Or some other guitar player playing some riffs that you fucking have no idea what they are. <laughs> and then, yeah, because he's putting his signature on it. Uh -uh. We play yeah. the stuff exactly the way it should be played. Okay, I know, like you said before, and we'll, we can wrap up in a minute. Talk. I know. You like you said, you've managed some of the biggest bands in the industry for 40 years, right? You've been with Kiss for 27 years now, I think it is. Is there mm -hmm. something as you look back, especially the, your career with Kiss, that you could say, hey, the band would have never done that, whatever it is, if I wasn't their manager? There's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give an example of something? Well. They certainly wouldn't have done Tiger Stadium out of the box and mm. and done all that. That was never in anybody's plan but mine. But did they think they couldn't do it? No, I just think that they, you know, 
everybody wants to play safe and play the middle and go do this and go do that. Mm. And I think that, and, and they had been pounded into trying to reinvent themselves and doing different things. And instead of just being kiss and they, and, the, and to me, they lost their way and that's fine because that's what people do. Sure. They didn't lose their way. They went down a path that they probably shouldn't have gone down. Okay. Uh, and chase things. Okay. They were kiss. One thing, whether you like kiss or not, Okay. When you listen in 1973, 1974, five and six, there was nothing out there that sounded like Kiss. Agreed. Nothing. Nothing. Agreed. Agreed. And if anybody can show me who to, who sounded like Kiss or that they that Kiss took from them, now yes, there's DNA of the different people, different songs and stuff sure. and changes. That's always part of it. But I can tell you one thing that almost in every artist that I've known. There's a little kiss DNA in it. Yeah. Very true. Well, you mentioned Motley Crue before, right? So, I mean, to me, when Motley Crue first hit the scene, and I know you managed them, you know, back in the early days, but I always saw just an extension of Kiss with some of their stage show and some of the things they were doing. Yeah. Because it's theatrical. It's 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 they connect. They know what people want. Yeah. What people like. Yeah. That's all I do. I find that's what I do. I find people that connect. That's all. Absolutely. Now you mentioned before John Five joining Motley Crue, and I was at yeah. the first show, and I thought he did a phenomenal job, right? So, um, and I think he's the perfect fit. There's been these stories that Mick left because of you know other reasons. Have you spoke to any of the guys? You know any reason no, about why Mick I left? I haven't spoke to anybody. Okay. Uh, Mick is Mick is one of my favorite people. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you, I've always liked Mick Mars from day one. Um, uh, being a guitar player myself, not nearly as accomplished <laughs> as guys, but um, would watch him in, in, in awe because he was really a really good guitar player. He had he had he had sounds like Ace. Ace kind of invented his own shit that influenced all these other guitar players. If you were born in 1960, okay. And you wanted to play guitar, and you were 12, 13, 14 years old, you were playing fucking ace freely. Absolutely. That's that's really what it was. So so Mick was that guy, okay, to me in the 80s. Okay. So and, and Mick just had such a great sound and a great uh delivery system. So I think that Mick just, to be honest with you, I think he just felt that he didn't he didn't want to travel. He didn't want to go do this anymore. You know, there's a lot of those people that do that. I mean, you know, everybody at some, some certain point goes, I can't do this. Sure. You know, and he's had health issues and everything else. And so I think he, you know, I, I'm, I don't know the ins and outs. I don't believe from anything I've heard that there was any kind of push between okay. the bank and him. But that, but they, I could be wrong, but I don't right. think so. So, will you guys be selling us any 50th anniversary merchandise or Kissology 4 or anything like that coming up? Oh, let me guess. Yes. <laughs> is, is Kissology 4 still on the table? Yeah, not Kissology 4, but they'll be, you know, listen, what, what now what we want to do is celebrate this 50 years of Kiss. Yep. Uh, to go out giving people an idea of, the road of KISS for 50 years. The, um, not just the accomplishments, the ups, the downs, the, the to, to, to where people can almost like a roadmap to say, wow, this part I don't want to do to myself. <laughs> <laughs> this part I do. I, I, think it's, I, I think it's into more of that. So there's going to be the good, bad, and the ugly. <laughs> And the tour does kick off, I think it's next month, April in Brazil, yeah. the final 50 shows. Uh, and I can Manaus, speak on behalf. I'm sorry? In Manaus, Brazil. Yep. 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 Right and in the Amazon. <laughs> wow, amazing. And then you guys are, are going to be back in the States later this year in Canada as well. Yeah. So, you know, I, I could say, talk on behalf of all the fans, you know, thank you for you know, helping the band through the last two, almost three decades. It's such incredible memories. 
I'm hoping once you have that QTR and you're sitting at home, you'll decide to write a book, not just about KISS, but about your entire career, which I think has been absolutely amazing. So hopefully that's something on the horizon for you in retirement. We don't know. We don't know. You know <laughs> yeah, it's hard to write a book when you're in the uh, inter sanctum of, uh, of an artist and they've trusted you with their... Of course. I understand. It, so, and it certainly isn't fair for me to tell tales out of school. Mm, uh, it's not my place. So that type of book will not be written. Um, there's a lot of funny things that happen. Who knows? I'll probably... Absolutely. I'll probably do something. Awesome. Well, Doc, I want to thank you for the time. We'll be looking for that announcement next week for you know what band will be supporting KISS on the North America shows. And for all the fans out there, I mean, you were pretty clear on this. There's, you know, If there's a cruise, it's not going to be anything like it was. You were right. pretty straightforward with no to Vegas. So go see the band now because there's not going to probably be other chances really in the future. You're not. After December 2nd, you will not see KISS. That I, that I certainly wouldn't won't be around or have anything to do with it. Neither will Gene and Paul, I'm sure of it. So it sounds like if there's a 2.0 kiss, you won't manage that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't have, you know, I think that I'll be a consultant on some stuff. Probably who knows where I'll be an insultant. I can, <laughs> one, one of the two. <laughs> uh, That's great. Uh, so, uh, but you know, it's, they have careers, you know, Gene does, a deal every seven seconds. <laughs> That's true. Paul, he probably Paul, did three while we were talking here just now. <laughs> he, he probably did. He probably didn't listen to this because he was in the middle of doing a movie. That's right. <laughs> uh, and Paul's painting and he's got his kids and he's he does great on his artwork. He loves his artwork. Uh, you know, he loves his Soul Station project. You know, so that there these two are not like stopping to go play bocce ball. <laughs> right. uh, Okay, so. Like I would if I was them, just for the record. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Well, talk again. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. We look forward to seeing the band on the road. I hope to see you out there as well. And uh, again, there. thank you for all the memories. You got it. Thank you. All right. Take it easy, Doc. Bye-bye. All righty. There you have it. I'd like to thank Doc for joining me, talking all about the end of the road KISS tour and what the plans are for 2023 and beyond. Thanks a lot, Doc. It's always an honor to have you on. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You could also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.